Hey, welcome back to the Ready State. Today we're taking on common elbow pain, whether it's golfer's elbow or tennis elbow, which is just really shorthand for, hey, I have, I have something going on with the flexor side or something going on with the extensor side, really. But let's be honest, your elbow does a whole lot of things, right? So when we see this issue, we think, of course, it's complex. And sometimes it just pops up overnight and we have protocols and we talk extensively about this and the implication of the nervous system and lack of rotation at the shoulder, working upstream and downstream, even just stiffness in the forearm, even just poor warm up and then go and drink with your buddies can do it. So what I wanna do though is show you one of our first ways of seeing if we can improve how these tissues are articulating and sliding. Can we kind of in, in restore how that whole circumferential fascial sheath is articulating? And then also, sometimes when we voodoo floss this thing, we're just gonna get blood flow to come crashing back in. So can we improve microcirculation in this tissue? What can we do to even just desensitize the tissue? So this is the wrap, and it's a little bit of a tricky wrap. It doesn't matter so much because we're not dealing with congestion, but one of the things that's happened is that when I have pain on the outside or pain on the inside, what we're seeing is it, it can be kind of thought of as an apophysitis, which is I have an insertion of a muscle onto bone issue. That can be it. So I've somehow strained this interface. And one of the first things that we know is that when I have a, a, a micro trauma or I've strained an interface, that can potentially be cause local congestion. So by compressing that intermittently and then popping off, uh, releasing that, that compression, that can be a really powerful way to decongest this thing and help get the garbage out and bring the groceries in. So when we wrap this thing, we're gonna wrap it and we're gonna go 50% tension, 50% overlap. Now it's a little tricky on yourself, but what you gotta do is you just gotta get a bite set up. So now I've got it, and what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna go on the inside here, so imagine I'm trying to wrap the inside of my elbow, and I'm gonna go ahead and test, take 50% tension, 50% overlap, and I'm gonna do the best I can to try to cover those tissues. It may buckle up a little bit as I go around here, so just do the best you can to get it straight. It'll kind of straighten out. And we go a couple inches above the painful site and a couple inches below. And what we're trying to do there is implicate the feeder tissues. So I've got some tissues above and below that are potentially feeding slack to that system. So then just do your best to tuck this in. If Margaret was here, oh, I almost had it. So give me one second here. This is a live TV, we're doing it live. Thanks, Bill. And I'm just gonna tuck this thing in so I can have an emergency escape hatch if I need. Okay, so now, a couple rules. One is that if I start to go super tingly, I should probably stop. So you'll know what that feels like. If your hand starts to feel like it's going to sleep, like you've done this a million times, then uh, you have exceeded the tissue tolerance. We still have plenty of time here, but that's our, our reference for just safety at home. Second is that I'm trying to get as much motion in as I can. So one of the things that we're gonna do here, right, these are the flexors on this side. So I'm gonna take myself into extension and even just flex and extend the elbow with the, with the wrist in this end range position can be really powerful, right? And I also can think about, hey, I'm gonna restore rotation. So I'm interested in making sure, because we see that these conditions end up oftentimes being insufficient rotation. Don't have enough rotation of the tissues, bink, right? Don't have enough rotation of the tissues, bink. And, uh, or I, I'm stiff here, I, I'm missing rotation at the shoulder, so the clever hand does the rest. I love what the, the Russians say, the hand is clever. The hand will solve a lot of issues for lack of range of motion upstream. The problem is when I run out of hand rotation because my shoulder is limited, then these things can be can also uh, sort of double down. So one of the things that we like though is to try to get as much motion as we can in this tissue system. So notice I'm just grabbing this. I can change the hand in both directions. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna move one direction and then I'm gonna just resist. So I'm just grabbing the whole thing in this kind of lumbrical grip, boom. And just imagine trying to get the bones and the tissues to slide underneath that. I can add some rotation and flexion. And the goal is to just get as much motion into this tissue system as I can while I'm still uh, under tension, right? So that popped out. Oh, if you have a friend, super friend there who can help. There we go, now we're locked in. So add as much rotation as you can imagine, and you can do it in a couple different positions, and you'll see suddenly that it's not an accident that the, the club bells, that the kettle bells, that the maces, a lot of this stuff, a lot of the long lever shapes done with a PVC pipe, 
These things are all about just keeping it on rotation. Even early CrossFit used to talk about making sure that this pull-up also equal this pull-up, making sure that you're actually spending competency and time developing ranges. And really, it's not just about being able to do pull-ups or chin-ups. It's about making sure that I have as much rotation and keeping an eye on that. So as we're restoring that, we're thinking, hey, what are the different shapes I can put my elbow into? How can I manage? And how can I get as much motion in here as I can? So just do your best to get as much motion as you can and then also do it in a short lever position. So I went from long lever to short lever, and now I'm just adding rotation, using my other hand for overpressure, going the other direction, adding the hand for overpressure. So use this opportunity to change how your brain is thinking about these tissues, to get the garbage out, to bring the groceries in, to restore sliding, to improve microcirculation, to improve how the musculature is articulating with its neighbors. Whatever the mechanism is, we're all on board. Pop it off, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna see blood come crashing back in. You can see I was starting to get a little ischemic there. I didn't get any tingling, I just was getting ischemic. Felt like blood flow restriction, which is maybe part of the magic here. We don't know. What we know is that it's working on all these tissue systems, and when you pop that off, you're gonna see, hey, do I have easier range of motion? Did that change my point tenderness? If it did, great. If we restored your range of motion, we're gonna to need to do that anyway. So having a plan when these things happen, and you can start to see how bright and pink it is, hydration is coming crashing back in, blood flow is coming crashing back in, and just that alone may be enough to desensitize the tissue as it's healing. If this thing is old and cold, then just giving it a bump might change some aspect of how the system is working. It might even change how the nervous system is articulating with this, which as we know is enough to uh, make changes in those sodium ion channels and that ectopic depolarization. Shorthand for, we know the pain science, this is complicated. So what are we gonna do? Fix it, work it on ourselves. You got this, one or two times a day is gonna be plenty if this thing is hot. Once a day, even prior to movement, can be, uh, be a lifesaver. This is Buda Flossen, your elbows.